Thank you. Sure. If you don't mind. And then sure. I can, if you identify yourself. Okay. <laughs> I'm Rosemary Fiore. And we're out in the, we're out at the uh, Radcliffe uh, Boulevard. Or, or right. The, in, the, uh, in the Bronx. That's right. In yeah. Morris Park. In Morris Park. Beautiful. Um, and I'll be visiting your studio mm -hmm. and your husband's. And can you say something now? Sure. Your turn. <laughs> These, <laughs> this is work from last year. I'm making different work now. But this is uh, work using fireworks. So all the, it's fumage. It's smoke on paper. So all the colors Ooh. and everything is from the smoke. Um, and I contain them. Um, at this point, I was drawing with them by putting the smoke containers on poles and containing them in, in coffee containers and things like that. Cutting the paper, folding it, and igniting between the folds. And through a process, this kind of process, it creates these large uh, abstract pieces on paper. Well, it's hard so, to quite make clear that these are actually collage. It's collage, yeah. So there's many and layers. Physical, very yeah. physical. I can't, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if it comes through, but it's, mm -hmm. it's all layered. These are, it looks painterly. And yet it's actually physical paper or something. Right? Yep, it's smoke on paper. And smoke, on, so smoke on paper. Um, and then down here, here, look at this. Hi, Royce. Yeah. Okay, I've gotten your emails. It's a nice one. Yeah, I'm the one. <laughs> yeah, okay. Good to have a face of the name. Nice yeah. to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, um, so this is basically the process where I'm um, exploding and drawing with fireworks on paper. And then they get fixed and collaged. So many, many layers of different explosions. This is, going to, this is an explosion going on there. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at a book, which is, the book is? It's a new book that just came out. I'll look at that it's raw material and art. <laughs> done by Tristan, uh, Tristan yeah. Monaco and Tim's and Hudson. Yes. Is the publisher. Is the publisher. Good. Found, scavenged. And recycled. Upcycled, 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 um, before they renovated, so it's yeah. when they had that nice triangular space there, um, and so we, I did this at, at Grand Arts, mm -hmm. you know Grand Arts, and um, in Kansas City, and then we just transformed one of the cars of the um, Scrambler ride into a painting machine. So we we created a spirograph. It's really a yeah. spirograph because it makes a hypocycler when it goes around. So um, we just created these. These are sixty by sixty feet, so they're very large. Yes. Great ambition. That. That's a great place to do a project like this because <laughs> yeah. they they really make it easy for you. Yeah, yeah. But you're right. Otherwise, I would be like lost. Yeah. To organize the space to do this because this ride alone was, I needed a diameter of sixty by sixty feet just to put it in to a space. Yeah. And so this warehouse would barely fit it in between the poles of the structural poles of the warehouse. So it was um, it's fortunate. I came a little late to the conversation, yeah. so all of that is smoke? Yes, it's all. So if you, um, I'll show you guys a video That's upstairs, but it's all fireworks smoke. It's extraordinary. It's fumage, kind of, like up, updated fumage. Right. It's really like the, the history goes back to to that. Um, Yves Klein and Wolfgang Pei. Um, Say it again, who your, who your references were? Well, I'm very fond of um, this surrealist artist named Wolfgang Pollen, P-A-A-L-E-N, and he used a candle on canvas and then painted into it with paint. So that was a surrealist, kind of an automatic kind of drawing technique. So um, since I use mechanisms to, to paint with, I'm a painter that uses mechanisms like lawnmowers and um, the music park rides and uh, floor polishers, pinball machines, um, cars to create painting. So I use the mechanism and then I um, kind of take my hand away and I kind of work with the chaos so of the machine to create the happens. painting. So you're, you're having a conversation with the machine. Yes. And now I'm creating my own machines. So um, these are my painting machines. Wow. Um, oh, great. That's intense. I do have one of those. It's a painting.
painting machine. These are, um, so uh, hopefully I'll give you a demo on this. Um, That'd be fantastic. So it moves around. This is my firework painting machine. They're, um, they're called smoke painting machines. So How does it work? I'll show you. I'm going to give a demo. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. What is it Thank you very much. If, if you could, uh -huh. I know this is a very difficult question for any artist, yes. but if you could say to us what it is you want to communicate to the viewer, right, mm -hmm. about your work, what is it you want them to walk away with from your work? I, want, I don't want the viewer to work. I, I just make my work, you know, and I'm very interested in using popular technology, um, and I'm interested in the history of painting and how to use technology as a painter. And, you know, there are very beautiful abstractions that are created from the machines, so it's abstract work. But I can't really say, like, what I want. I hope that it's a meaningful experience for the viewer in some way. No, I'm sure but, it is. But so when you create something, though, you don't necessarily, because a lot of artists actually want to communicate something about themselves, their work, their view of the world. Right, That's um, all. that all goes into my choice of machines, my process, so all, everything that makes me who I am, all my experiences. You know, all of these projects come out of experiencing life. With the Scrambler piece, when I was at an amusement park um, in, um, uh, in uh, Kings Dominion, Virginia, I was on a Scrambler ride, and I was there with a friend who was a writer, and um, we're always, you know, talking about ideas and, and things. So we're on the ride talking about ideas, and I'm like, you know, this is a really a big spirograph. Uh, um, and so all my ideas are coming from my experiences um, as a person. And the same with the, the firework pieces. I was um, lighting off fireworks on the 4th of July, dropped the firework on the floor, and all of a sudden it skipped across the cement. And I thought, well, this is a mark making of some sort. This is a mechanism that makes a mark. So as an artist, I'm, in, I'm like part physicist, part alchemist, part right. artist. Um, part my engineer, right, especially with these machines I'm designing now. Um, but my history, I'm an art history major, um, and studio art major, and I've worked for two years in Italy doing art restoration. So I'm extremely interested in process, mm -hmm. and I'm extremely interested in materials, um, and marrying materials with concepts. So all of my concepts and materials kind of marry each other. These are um, glass pieces I made by capturing the the breath and explosion of a firework. So inside Whoa. is a is an actual Explain that. So these are very delicate, but um, basically I blew glass with fireworks. Wow. So I wanted to, see, I wanted to marry the idea of capturing the, the breath and explosion of the firework right. with a material that was sculptural. Right. So I found glass. That was the only material that was appropriate. But you were able to idea. capture, so what you've done for all of us is you've captured the experience of a firework right there. Yeah. That's, it's mm -hmm. something that can't be captured and has been yeah. captured. Yeah, absolutely. That's extraordinary. That's wild. That's so my materials, they are chosen by the idea? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, because yeah. I couldn't do this in any other sculptural No, material. it makes perfect sense. I was thinking, oh, I'll explode underneath the ground, and then I will, <laughs> I will <laughs> take some hands of bronze and create this cavity. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It was too much, like, the process is, yeah. I mean, yeah. The process, like the time it takes for this smoke pond to release its breath, is about the time it takes for glass to kind of cure, to kind of cool. So then it becomes non-movable. So the timing of the two processes lined up perfectly. Now it took a long time to figure out how the hell to do it because there's no like instruction book on how right. to blow glass yeah. with explosives. But um, I was able to do a residency at VCU in Virginia with their fine arts, with their materials studies department and glass department and painting department. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was able to work with them there to engineer it. And then I also work with a place in Asbury Park. So over, you know, many years, we've been trying to make these stable and mm -hmm. hopefully with more gaffers, we can go bigger wow. eventually. But, um, and are so. you showing anywhere right now? Am I working with somebody? No, or do you have an exhibition anywhere? I do. Or? I have um, I have an exhibition coming up at the um, SCAD Art Museum mm -hmm. in, in Savannah, and then it's going to Hong Kong after that. And so. will you be doing some of these pieces? No. Those, that show will be my older work, which is this work here, which you're looking at. Um, so these, these types of pieces here. Got it. Um, this is from 2011. Um, but the smoke painting pieces that I'm making, I began this project um, over the summer 
at a great residency called Art Oh My. Yes. And um, I had a lot of support there, and Felicity <laughs> visited, so she knows what a great place this is. Yes. It's really, Where is really it? great. It's in um, Ghent, New York. Ghent. Which is near Hudson. Yeah. And yeah, so it's close by. And um, okay, no. so anyway, I, I wanted to, you know, I was, I was making this work here, which, you know, where I was dragging the firework across the paper and, you know, capturing it under buckets and um, all of this. It, it was very nice and interesting. But I wanted to focus on these containers, these tools, because these were found objects. The pole was a broomstick. Mm. So, I mean, of course, I got this from the, from the abexes because they were always using broomsticks and stuff. So this was very much part of, like, my art history. Um, and cans and things like this. Buckets. And so then I wanted to create my own, I wanted to create more control over my tools. So I began to create my own, to construct my own tools. Um, and I'll show you them. Um, but the idea basically came from doing a lot of more research on firework history and looking into the green man who was a fireworks man um, during, the, during the medieval ages. Um, and he would have a fire club in his hand, which is a stick with a big thing of fireworks, which is like insane for us to think about actually doing today because they had no fireproof clothing or anything. So he was called a green man because he was covered with green um, foliage, like leaves and stuff, because they had no like fireproof clothing. And so he would carry this fire club, it was called, and it would shoot these fireworks out of it. So I was like, oh, that's like my pole, <laughs> you know, <laughs> except I'm drawing with it. So I said, what if I can have more control over my fire club, quote unquote, and create my own moving fire clubs? Wow. So I kind of, it's, it seems to me now, I don't know how exactly how I made that mental connection, but some kind of circuitry lined up in my head where, you know, I can create fire clubs. So these are basically fire clubs, but I call them smoke painting tools. Must be uh, spectacular when you're making them. Are you filmed? You will see it today. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to close off right now just because this is 12 minutes now. And I want to thank you for putting us, uh, for explaining all this to us. And thank you. Uh, congratulations, both of you. It's just a spectacular, like that, <laughs> performance. And colorful, obviously, so colorful there. And very colorful people, obviously, the, the deep. <laughs> <laughs> meaning in, in this is we are very sparky or <laughs> I mean sparkling people. Anyway, thanks.